What is happening guys, Cowboy here, and welcome to the 100% walkthrough of the Ring City DLC for Dark Souls 3. So a couple things before we get started, obviously this walkthrough series is going to be absolutely filled with spoilers, so if you don't want spoilers you shouldn't be watching. Uh, on top of that, we're going to be very quickly going through conversations with characters. The point of this series is to show you where to go for stuff, not go into the lore. So if you want to go into the lore, I'd suggest either watching the Let's Play series or going through it yourself. We're going to be taking a strength character through. We are at soul level 130. This is actually my poise character, but I respect him to be higher focused on strength. So the primary stats here we're looking at are 40 vigor, 40 endurance, and then 60 strength. Uh, as for the gear loadout for those curious, we're going to be running with a heavy great axe plus 10 as our main, as well as a heavy millwood battle axe plus 10 as our secondary. The main shield is a Yorm's great shield, gotta love that poise, and we also have a buckler for parries. Uh, as for the fashion, black iron helm, deserter armor, cathedral knight gauntlets, and northern trousers. And for our ring choices, hornet ring, chlorinthy, ring of favor, and havel's ring. So, to get things started off, there are two entries into the Ring City DLC. The first is at Kiln of the First Flame, so you need to be at least past Lorien and Lothric in the main game. The second is the Sister Freed Bonfire, so if you have the Ashes of Ariandel DLC, you can use this bonfire to also get into the DLC. So, either of those are possible. Uh, we're going to be going through on New Game, of course. New Game Plus enemies basically just have more health. Uh, and all of the soul items turn into great champion souls. That's the primary difference I've seen. So, to get things going, let's head on over to the Dreg Heap and get started. So, after you get the bonfire, we're going to go on out. There's an NPC right here. Hi, hi. You can run through her, say I have business with you, and she'll have a couple things for sale. Uh, primarily the embers, as well as the split-leaf greatsword, are the two main things of note. You can kill her to get her ashes now, and give them to the Shrine Maiden. Alternatively, at the end of the DLC, after you've completed it, her ashes will just be sitting here waiting for you, and you can take them to the Shrine Maiden at that point. Uh, we're going to go around the corner here to pick up an ember, and then we're going to take the plunge. So anytime you take a plunge, just make sure there is an ash pile below you. That will negate all damage. So, after our plunge, the first thing we're going to do is sprint up ahead. There's a caster spawning over there on the right that you can see. We're going to go take that out first. After him, we have another caster that's spawning over here. And these casters will fire greater soul dregs at you, which can do quite a bit of damage, so it's good to uh, take them out quickly. As for these enemies, they're fairly weak. I would suggest using a good AoE weapon to take them out. Uh, I don't have solid AoE, so I'm just going to go with the Millwood Battle Axe, because that can has a wide enough swing range to tear them up. They're pretty weak, but a couple things to watch out for in the Merkmen. They can actually grab you and hold you in place, which can result in death. Uh, if they grab you, you're probably going to get hit by the... Uh, greater soul drag that the enemies, the casters will throw at you, so keep that in mind. Uh, after that, we're going to run up here, kill this last caster. As you can see, the whole series of those fights, uh, this one didn't really get involved, so as long as you don't run over here, you shouldn't really trigger her and you should be fine. Uh, after this, we're going to encounter our first Herald. So as for the Herald, you want the heaviest weapon you have possible. Just chill here for a second and he should drop down. And now we're just going to plunge attack. Now, plunge attacks are, hands down, the best way to kill the Herald enemies, as you can see. Instantly took him out. After that, we're going to go ahead and grab this chunk. Uh, those enemies can also drop their item set. It does make you look rather large, similar to Smo's armor. And then we're going to come up here and get our first new weapon, the Aquamarine Dagger. So the Aquamarine Dagger is basically a Dex Int Dagger. It has a, uh, the skill of Crystal Blade kind of turns it into a lightsaber. Very fast hits on this. A uh, decent amount of stagger potential as well. So, something to keep in mind if you're running a Dex, excuse me, a Dex Int build. Uh, after that, we're going to run this way. And there's going to be an item over here that we're going to grab. But it's also going to break as we go for it. So, just get ready. We're about to plunge. Now, ignore that item for now. First thing you want to do, run straight up. Take out this caster before it has a chance to cast on you. Be another one right over here. Take out the basic murky first. Where's the other caster at? Come on now. I know you're waiting to spawn. Might be good to just let one spawn for the fact that you'll be able to see greater soul dregs. Anyway, we'll take this guy out. Hm. 
Looks like the caster did not spawn. So, anyway, go ahead. Oh, here they... No, nope, that's a regular. Come on. Go ahead and grab the twinkling off the chandelier. Come over to here and grab the soul. As I mentioned, on New Game Plus, that'll be a uh, higher-end soul item. Got the titanate scale in the back of the room. Here is the other caster. A little bit slow to spawn. And then we're going to run up this, circle around the corner to grab our next new DLC weapon. That is the Murky Hand Scythe. So Murky Hand Scythe, actually a uh, really decent weapon. As you can see, kind of even scaling here. It's made for dark. It has the dagger quick step with it. But uh, on top of having innate dark built in, you can also put resins and whatnot on this, making it a very good one-handed weapon for dark type caster builds, especially when you consider the relatively low stat requirements of 6, 11, 11, 11. Oh, coming out here, we're going to take our next plunge. And this is going to be our first encounter with an angel. So we're going to drop, we're going to grab this real fast. The line. And you can already see the laser firing at us. Now, now, there's a couple ways to handle these. Some people have mentioned using hidden body. I don't recommend it. I don't think it, it works as effective as people say it does. Um, but one thing you can do is if you hang out enough where it doesn't have line of sight, the angel will go to sleep. Here's a good example of a Merc man grabbing you. Kick him off and kill him. So right now you can see the angel is kind of just resting. Uh, it's looking for someone. It doesn't see anybody. But we're going to run around the corner and grab a Ring of Steel Protection plus three. So just get ready. Um, one thing that is important to note with these angels is the longer you're in line of sight of them, the more lasers they'll start to progressively fire. So right there, there was a volley of, say, 6 to 10 lasers. Uh, if you're running through an area that has angels with a bunch of players, you're going to start to see, like, 10 to 20 lasers coming out, making it much more difficult to dodge. So definitely important to keep that in mind. All right. So in here, we're going to fight two infested Lothric Knights. Uh, now, they are going to hit quite hard. <clears throat> this one has a new weapon called the Lothric Banner. It basically does an AoE war cry effect, buffing the other Lothric Knights. You can parry them, typically. Um, same as Lothric Knights. I like using the shield and just circling around, going for the backstab. Uh, I honestly feel shield is probably the safest way to go through a lot of this DLC. Like, this DLC, it's actually quite punishing for caster builds. Probably should have said that back at the start. But you'll have a much easier time playing a uh, strength or quality type build than you will playing a build focused around casting. Uh, a lot of the enemies are resistant to fire or dark damage, so something to keep in mind. As you can see, a, a heavy end strength build with the shield is tearing through this with ease. So we're going to run over here, pick this guy up. Um, now we're going to go outside. Just checking my notes here. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we're going to go this way, get the rusted coins by the well. We'll kill the caster again. Uh, and one thing that's worth noting is that if you don't kill these casters, there's the greater soul dregs. Uh, if you don't kill them, <clears throat> they will move and try to fire at you again. So keep that in mind. Now, up in this room ahead, there is a really good chance of you getting absolutely mobbed. So just be aware of that. There is a chunk, a murky long staff, and an invisible wall to the left. So we're going to run straight for those. Otherwise, as I mentioned, you'll probably get mobbed and end up being killed. The murky long staff. Break the wall open. And once you're upstairs, it's not as bad. It's going to be a little bit easier to survive uh, now that we've avoided the majority of these things. I'm going to roll out onto the terrace. There's going to be a couple more Merkmen that show up. But one trick you can do to make your life a little bit easier is just go out here onto the terrace. Uh, as long as you're on the terrace, as you can see, the soul dregs aren't able to hit you. They end up just, uh, they, you know, they just don't. They hit the terrace and they break apart. So if you need an area, uh, kind of a safe haven, if you will, to reset, drink Estes, whatever the case is, good place to go. them gone, let's go ahead and get Great Soul Dregs, the spell they've been shooting at us. Uh, so actually using the spell yourself, it doesn't 
seem to be as crazy as theirs. It's kind of like a, uh, a, a slightly toned down version, which is a little disappointing, but still worth noting. Anyway, uh, kick down that ladder, and then we're going to run over here to grab our covetous silver serpent ring plus three. So if you're looking to farm souls, you can do it all day. All right, so we're going to make this fall. Now that that's fallen, we're going to go right back inside, right to where we fought those knights, and you'll see this is now opened up. And we're going to go meet our first quest NPC of this DLC. So as you can see over here, we're safe from the angel. Or the thing that spawned the angel is actually just below us. Which actually, you know, let's go take that out real fast just to uh, explain that. So anytime an angel gets summoned, uh, what it will do is there'll be a small light you'll see that tells you where the summoner is. In this case, the summoner is right here. Once you walk up and kill this thing, the angel immediately disappears, as you can see. It dies up in the sky. These things also always drop twinkling tight at night. So, with the angel gone, now you don't really have anything to worry about as you proceed through. So, we're just going to run back this way, uh, go back out, and we'll talk to Lap again. So, we're going to go through and run through all the dialogue for Lap. Just very quickly, as I mentioned, we're not looking to go into the lore in this series. We're simply showing you where to go. You can listen to it on your own time. Um, the next encounter we're going to have with him is going to be in the next zone, basically the next bonfire, but we want to do that, uh, talk to him here and go this path first. So there's going to be a Merc Man that's going to spawn right where I just landed. Go ahead and kill this one first. You can see the Jagger Soul Dregs coming at us. Oh man. And as you can see, when it does hit, it does quite a bit of damage. Top ourselves off here. Looks like they're gone. Um, now, there's a couple items down here. I don't really feel it's worth going that way. Um, ultimately, well, there's going to be a Merc Man that shows up in a second. Let's kill him. Come on, where are you at? There you are. And here's the other one. Come on now. <laughs> it actually plunged me. Murky, come on. Stop. Okay, um, so from here, there are two items down there, just referencing my notes here. Um, great sword soul item. Do, 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 do. Yes, so there's going to be uh, one Merc caster that'll spawn right from kind of that puddle you see down there near the two statues. A bunch of regular Merc men will spawn. You also have the Herald that's patrolling around. You can plunge him if you want to go that way. Um, and then as for the items that are down there, you have a, let's see, go down, homeward bones and a chunk. So, um, whether or not you want to do it is up to you. We're going to do it just for the sake of, you know, being in the walkthrough. So, we'll plunge the herald. Go over here and get our homeward bones. Harold dropped a chunk for us, and there's the other chunk. So go ahead and hop back to the bonfire. Um, that's it for this little spot. You can proceed to the boss directly from there, but there's some other areas that you may want to go, um, namely because there's another spell and a weapon waiting from you, or waiting for you, excuse me. So from here, quickly, we're going to speed run back. I'm just going to go, roll. And just run past these guys, you know. If you uh, if you decided to go down there, I mean, obviously there's a free homeward bone waiting for you, so you can just take that, get the items, and then head right on out. Um, and this portion is actually pretty forgiven, forgiving for just uh, sprinting through it as I am now, uh, especially with the angel gone. You know, there's really nothing at all to worry about, and we're almost back to where we were already. So just gotta go here. The knights have respawned, but we're just gonna run right past them. Go to where Lap was. Uh, it's actually pretty easy because this one won't move while that one does his buff, so it allows you to just go right on past them. We're going to keep on going. You can see Lap has now moved locations, so we'll find him at the next bonfire. 
we're going to run right past where this guy is and drop down into the ash. So, you want to go ahead and hit this knight with a throwing item, something to draw him back here. Uh, that area back there is going to have a lot of enemies, a lot of uh, casters, as well as regular merkmen. So it's very much advised to pull this guy away from the group. It'll make life a lot easier taking him on away from everything else. As always, with the Lothric Knights, circle backstabs are pretty effective, and then follow up with a heavy to smash them. Um, now this area can get a little tricky, especially if you're not paying attention. There's going to be an item right there that's projected heal. We're not going to go for that right now. It's very easy to get surrounded by enemies in that corner and then end up getting killed. Instead, we're going to hang out right here. We're going to let some of these merc men come to us. And after we whittled down their numbers a bit, it'll be much safer for us to run in. Want to backstab this one. You can see uh, round two of merc men are now spawning, so go back to our safety zone over here. Kill this Merc Man. And we'll stay here one last time. Kill this last cluster of enemies that's coming in right now. And kill the last caster. So yeah, you can imagine how trying to fight all the Merc Men and the three casters can end up being overkill. Uh, additionally, you do not want to run past this. If you do run past, Merc Men will end up getting spawned down there, and they'll grab you, and then you'll have the Soul Dregs coming at you, as well as trying to fight the Lothric Knight. No, stop that. Uh, we're just waiting for our Knight to patrol. Easy plunge attack on this guy. And then you can charge heavy. It's really good to kill that guy in advance because you don't want to try and fight a great sword and a spear one at the same time, especially since this guy buffs them. So take out the one, then take out the other. And then we'll run right over here and grab a soul item. Uh, so for the spell we just got, let's go into that. Actually, a pretty interesting spell for PvP, Projected Heal. You end up firing a heal. Uh, it's almost on par with Greater Heal, I'd say right around the same. And you can use this to heal teammates in the arena battles as well as heal yourself. Uh, if you were to fire it out like where I'm standing right here, right against the wall, it's an AoE um, circular splash type heal. So worth doing. Anyway, from there, we're just going to round the corner over here. We're going to pick up our Lothric War Banner. Uh, another interesting item. It actually scales decently for spears, kind of like a, a mid-tier uh, spear. I mean, it holds a pike, but same category. And the skill of this, as I mentioned, applies an AoE Warcry effect. So it'll buff everyone's attack damage. So another item that's really good for the uh, team PvP. And then from here, just drop on down. Go forward just a pinch. And here is our bonfire for Earthen Peak Ruins. So at this point, you've beaten the first part of the DLC. Congratulations. And now it's time to take off the training wheels because things are a lot to get a lot more difficult. So thanks for coming by and checking out part one of the Ring City walkthrough. I'm going to be having these episodes coming to you guys pretty fast. So the Earth and Peak Ruins episode should be up in just a little bit. So make sure to stay tuned and we will see you guys then with more of that delicious Dark Souls 3 walkthrough content.